There's one hour that I like to avoid trading almost no matter how good the setup is. I found in this one hour of trading, you typically tend to see a lot more volatility and with that volatility, a lot more uncertainty with typically high probability setups. That hour is none other than the lunchtime hour, and this is lunchtime on the East Coast, or if you're on the Pacific Coast, that's the 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour. Now, I've detailed this hour before, but today gives us another set of data points that we can use to study the volatility of the major index markets. We can see how this volatility has a different personality during this hour, and how this is the hour where funny things tend to happen. Now let's start today with looking at the four major index markets and seeing how this volatility changed during the lunchtime hour. Today in particular, we saw that the Dow futures was the market that was the lesser volatile one between the index markets, along with the Russell. The Dow and the Russell went hand in hand. They each started on their scalper volatility box models. And by the end of that hour, they ended on the aggressive volatility box models. What I mean by that is if we zoom into this particular hour, inside of the Russell, we had price action start to rally. And right with this red candles wick right here, that's where price action broke outside of our scalper volatility box models. We had yet to see a single edge signal confirmation. And that was our sign that, hey, the scalper's not being respected. We need to switch to the aggressive volatility box models. Now, the Russell gave us a nice short side opportunity with that breach in that lunchtime hour. And the Dow was the other market, which gave us a nice short side breach, again, off of that aggressive volatility box models. In fact, the Dow was the only trade of the day, which hit both its first and its second targets. However, if we want to contrast this, the S&P and the NASDAQ took back most of the gains from each of these two trades. And if you took the NASDAQ at the second entry, it actually took back more than what you made for the day. Let's take a look at each of these two setups now to see how the volatility deferred here. Inside of the S&P 500, if we start with the scalper one more time, we had price action break outside of our clouds with this green candle right here. Again, that happened before we had seen our very first edge signal. That takes us to the aggressive volatility box models. With the aggressive models, here again, price action breaks outside of the clouds before we've seen an edge signal, and that tells us one more time we need to adapt. Remember, the Dow stopped here along with the Russell. The S&P has broken now outside of its aggressive models. That takes us into our doomsday aggressive models, and here we see price action breaches our sign entry line, and now we're able to see one and two overbought confirmations telling us that, hey, we officially think that price action is now in overbought territory and should reverse. And then that hour ends. And in almost the first two minutes after that, the volatility that you see, price action goes right outside of the clouds and this trade ends up stopping out. So the S&P here ended up moving at the end of the day to its conservative models with that stop out. And these were the models that were respected. So if you think about it, the Dow and the Russell each stopped on their aggressive. The S&P broke outside of its scalper, its aggressive, its doomsday aggressive. And finally, it ended on stop four out of stop five, where our last model available was the doomsday conservative. And speaking of the doomsday conservative, that's where the NASDAQ or AKA the NAS crack ended up for the day here. The NASDAQ in that 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour, you can see how that volatility along with the S&P exceeds even outside of our conservative clouds here. So it gives you an idea of that funniness that all took place in this 9 to 10 a.m. Pacific hour, which all up until that hour was a lot more controlled, a lot more muted, and all after that hour was a lot more controlled and a lot more muted. I hope you found this video useful. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading. I'll leave a link to the previous lunchtime video that I've done as well in case you're curious to find some more examples of futures and stocks.